Molten Core and Onyxia are some of the most memorable raids in WoW history. That's why, my fellow adventurers, we need to be ready in Phase 4, so we can slay these epic bosses and acquire their legendary loot. But it won't be easy. We're going to need the perfect combination of strategy, of gear, of consumes, to ensure our success in the raids. So with Molten Core and Onyxia here, we've got to talk about exactly the best way to get your raid ready in terms of attunements, in terms of douses. That way you can actually summon the bosses in the first place. We're also talking fire res gear, consumes. These are going to make such a big difference for success in your raid. Then we're going to round things off talking loot priority. How to optimally disperse all that epic and legendary loot to your guild. So let's start by talking attunements and douses. How to make sure your guild is actually set up to even kill the bosses in the first place. So of course all your raiders need to make sure they're attuned for Molten Core and Onyxia as well. The attune add-on really makes this whole process extremely chill. If everybody has the attune add-on, you can use the survey feature, and it'll tell you exactly which step everybody in your raid is on, so you can get on some of those last-minute procrastinators. I would also recommend not sleeping on the Aqua Quintessence questline. Historically, you needed seven different players to be on this step in the Molten Core and the Aqua Quintessence questline. Those players would also need to be honored with Hydraxian Waterlords. You can do the rest of the steps in the raid, but if you didn't have seven players on the Molten Core step, you wouldn't be able to summon Major Domo, and that means you wouldn't be able to summon Rag either. So with our Douses, with our attunement sorted, we have to talk about gear. Unlike in 2019, you won't be able to get away with just having a bunch of dungeon gear and walking into Rag and clearing him no problem. That's because in Season of Discovery, there are three different difficulty modes for Molten Core. There's the original basic Molten Core, and there's two additional heat level difficulty levels that you can activate from Duke Hydraxis and Ashara. These additional heat levels, they're really just giving you extra loot. It won't be different loot. There are different cosmetic upgrades to be had, though. For example, Perdition's Blade on the higher heat levels gets this really cool molten fiery look. In order to acquire the new gear and the new cosmetic upgrades, you're going to have to do more difficult versions of the existing Molten Core bosses. Of course, that means you're going to want to be decked out in that 0.5 dungeon gear bis for maximum damage output. But it also means you should be really prioritizing getting a second set of gear for fire resistance. One tip to find fire resistance gear really easily would be to make a character in 60 upgrades, and then you can set fire resistance as one of the stats you're looking for. So the most common mark that top guilds are looking for is about 150 fire resistance. There's a really helpful Reddit thread I'll link below the video that helped me to understand exactly how much fire res to bring into Molten Core. The TLDR recommended about 210 buff fire res, and it also warned against bringing really weak pieces, say green pieces, that just have a bunch of fire res. There are really four specific pieces every single top raider is going for. And the first is the Drake Fire Amulet. It comes from the Onyxia attunement anyways. It's 15 fire resistance. It's really a no-brainer. Second, we have the Wildfire Cape. You've probably seen it a million times in Ubers. It's 20 fire resistance, and with the new Coronation Enchantment from Hydraxan Waterlords, that puts it all the way at 40 fire res for free. The third universally agreed upon fire res piece is the Fire Extinguisher from Demon Falls Canyon. We just made five-man groups and just spammed DFC until every single player had the Fire Extinguisher. Then the fourth and last piece is the ring you can get from acquiring your Aqua Quintessence. The Duke is generously offering 20 fire resistance rings with very generous stats. So sure, you could have the minimum number of dowsers in your guild, or everybody in your guild could do the quest line and get a free ring and be stronger because of it. So with 95 fire resistance out of the way, the remaining pieces really depend on how rich you are or what your class is. An easy pickup for most players would be the Royal Seal of Eldrathos from your class book. Meanwhile, rogues and hunters with a lot of money they might want the Devil Core set with really good stats and 45 fire res. The big focus should be maintaining your hit cap and then putting fire resistance on those less relevant slots, necklaces and rings for example. I'd also recommend more fire resistance on your tanks and less fire resistance on your healers. As a priest, I really can't justify breaking my tier set just for extra fire res. Gamer casters that have been doing the Blackrock dailies now that the Molten Core materials are available, they'll be able to craft the Flare Core gloves and the shoulders. Alternatively, I grabbed the Water Walking Boots from Baron, which were a really nice free pickup. If you're rich rich, though, you could grab the Lesser Arcanums of Resilience. That would be a total of an extra 40 fire res for your head and your legs. 
So with fire res out of the way, we've got to talk about optimal consumes for the raid. Of course, your entire raid should be stocked up with supreme power, titans, or distilled wisdom, depending on your class. You should also have a big stack of fire protection potions for every raider. And don't forget the greater arcane protection potions for Shazra. Many guilds are also planning to use the Juju Ember for an extra 15 fire res. Depending on your class, every single raider should have Bisque consumes as well. That's why you should check out the video in the top right for a full rundown. As a quick note, the amount of prep effort really depends on which heat level you're going for. If you're going for the base difficulty, you're not going to need a million greater fire protection potions. But if you're going for heat level 3, you're going to need everything. Another note on consumes is that Ani and Rend are going to be dropping non-stop. Let's say your guild gets really close to killing Ragnaros. Might make sense to go back, rebuff, take 10 minutes, then come back again. So now let's talk about how planning and loot priority can make a huge difference for your success in the raid. Every single guild should have a plan for how to prioritize the Hand of Rag, the Benediction, Rock Delar, even the eventual Thunder Furies. The raiders expecting these items need to have the relevant crafted items ready to go so they can get their upgrades as soon as possible. If you're a priest angling to get Benediction, you should already have Eye of Shadow in your inventory ready to go. And if you're a hunter looking to get Rock Delar, you should already have the sinew ready to go as well. The power level increase is something like a Rock Delar. It's so massive that it actually could make a difference on a DPS check. Second, we need optimal loot priority. In Molten Core, we've really got to start hyper-prioritizing the fire res pieces to the tank, and eventually the DPS as well. The sooner we can get away from running the Onyxia Tuman necklace into something like the actual Onyxia necklace, the better. So for actually optimally dispersing the loot, I really recommend every single raider get the Loon Best in Slot add-on. It's already working for Phase 4, and the devs hard at work making sure any small problems get fixed. And knowing which pieces of loot are Bis or alternatively Bis, it really makes a big difference for optimally giving out loot. It also makes the raid way more fun, because you can actually get excited about every single drop, knowing exactly who's going to get it and why they want it. So with your plan for dominating Molten Core in hand, from the attunements to the douses to the gear to the consumes, and your plan for optimally dispersing loot, you're now set up for massive success in the raid. You should be well on your way to downing Ragnaros and getting all the legendaries of your dreams. I'd love to hear from you in the comments on which part of the Phase 4 gearing process has been your favorite so far. For me, it's gotta be destroying gnomes in Ultrak Valley. Love doing that to get my biz offhand. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more Molten Core videos in the very near future. Click on my Molten Core Consume Guide next to get infinite mana in the raid on all your casters.